What kind of wireless communications were used on the Titanic that sank in 1912? How did that event, tragic as it may be, improve wireless communications for maritime, mobile, and ships at sea since then? What is the history of SOS? And did the Titanic even use SOS? Was it even around back then? We're gonna talk about that today and more coming up right now. Thanks for joining the channel today. I'm Jason KC5HWB. A while back, I posted a video about a ham radio operator in Wales that heard distress calls over the airwaves from the Titanic when it sank in 1912. And since then, you guys have given me some really good feedback in the comments. So a lot of what we're gonna talk about today came from links that you shared with me. So put a comment below if you have any comments on this specific video right here. I think it's important to start with what, what exactly is the meaning of SOS? Some people may say, I've always heard that it says save our ships. What does SOS stand for? This is a, a great article from all, onallbands.com. There's a lot of different websites out there that you could find this on. But this right here says, it's not save our ships or save our souls like you might think. I always thought it was save our ships, but according to this article, it's not. Instead, the distress signal that originated in the maritime community and communication used specifically for ships based on Morse code is represented by three dots, three dashes, and three more dots, which is really easy to understand. Here's an example of what SOS actually sounds like. That's... I turned the speed down a little bit. I'm not very good at sending Morse code yet. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. SOS wasn't first recognized as a distress signal. Before SOS, there was CQD and CQ translating general notice and D abbreviation for distress. So the Titanic, and we're, I'm going to show you this here in a minute. So you're going to want to stay tuned for this. I found a really cool video of Morse code that was sent from the Titanic, both as a distress call and prior to the emergency that happened. So watch this. The Titanic sent both CQD and SOS, so you're going to want to watch that for sure. CQD wasn't a universal distress call. England used CQD. The U.S. Navy used NC, the International Code of Signals Maritime Distress Flag Signal, and Italy used SSSDD. Boy, that's a long SSSDD. Okay. A common indicator of distress in real uh, was real. The mode of communication needed to fit long. Okay. So the universal use of SOS was ratified in 1906 at the 1906 Radio Telegraph Conference and went into effect in 1908. So that's four years before the Titanic sank, or set sail and sank both. It first documented the use in the U.S. occurred in August of 1909 when the SS Arapaho lost power in the graveyard of the Atlantic near the Diamond Shoals. T.D. Habner, also recipient in the second document, USS uh, SOS signal sent the distress call and the ship and crew were successfully rescued. Okay, so good. So, so CQD was used prior to SOS, but today we use SOS. And I'm told that, you know, they say it doesn't stand for anything. So I'm told it's just so recognizable that it's just like SOS means. So it's, it's kind of like that. That's that's what I'm told more than anything. Okay, so it doesn't stand for anything. What, so what, it, what does CQD sound like? CQD is this. CQD. D is dog did it. That's a D. Okay, so that's CQD. So the sinking of the Titanic, actually, they used both CQD and SOS, and it was heard by that ham radio operator in Wales, but I thought it was very interesting how that all came about. Now, I don't want to make light of the tragedy. That's not what I'm saying. But there are, there are multiple stories throughout history where a tragedy happened. They figured out how to improve what had gone wrong and they put it into action. And today we have a lot of the rules and regulations that came out of certain things like that. So this is just one example of how that happened with the Titanic. NIST and the Titanic, how the sinking of the ship improved wireless communications for navigating the C. Okay, so if you roll down and scroll down here, and I'll share links to all this in uh, in the, the description of the video below. This is a really cool picture right there of some old radio teletype and uh, Morse code uh, telegraphy equipment there. In the late evening hours of April 14, 1912, Titanic struck an iceberg and about 640 kilometers, 400 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. By 2.20 a.m. on April 15th, the ship had sunk. Only about 700 people survived. More than 1,500, including passengers and crew, were lost. At the time, this is, this, is the, this is the part that pertains to this video here. At the time, the use of wireless systems, such as wireless telegraphy on ships, was relatively new. 
passengers and crew could use these telegraphs to send messages back to land and they played a role on the ship's operations communicating between different areas of the ship. The, the technology relied on radio frequencies to transmit telegraph signals as coded messages without relying on telegraph lines. So no phone lines, in, in other words, or telegraph lines back then, okay? The wireless telegraph on the Titanic was owned and operated by the Marconi Company. Okay, good deal. And was considered one of the best in the world with a range of about 1,600 kilometers, which is 1,000 miles. However, the system's electron hit, this is good. However, the system's electronics created so much noise that it disrupted wireless systems all over the ship. So they had RFI back in the day. RFI has always been a thing. Later on, the article goes on to talk about how Spark Gap creates a lot of RFI noise, of course, and they were trying to move away from Spark Gap because of that fact. Spark Gap was one of the first types of communication, types of modes of communication instead of uh, CW Morse code or what we call continuous wave and ham radio instead of sideband or FM or AM or whatnot. That Spark Gap was a, a thing used back in the day that's really not used anymore. You can see some really cool Spark Gap transmitters at the Marconi Museum in Long Island, New York. We did a tour of that a couple years ago. It was fun. This is an interesting part right here. The sinking of the Titanic also highlighted the lack of trained telegraphers. Okay, so Morse code, CW, and wireless technology was very new in the early 20th century, okay? Since the wireless technology was relatively new, many of the ship's wireless telegraphers were inexperienced. They had a hard time catching signals sent to them. I have a hard time, it's 120 years later today, 110 years later today, I still have a hard time catching signals sent to me. I need to practice my Morse code. They had difficulty relaying messages and were frequently sending repeats of their messages so they made sense on shore. The disaster would spur government officials and researchers and lawmakers to address the shortcomings in wireless technology. And then it talks about the International Radio Telegraph Conference Radio Act of 1912. So this was six years after the one we talked about a second ago. Okay, and this was interesting right here. Two wavelengths were used at the time and the leaders of the conference agreed that the 600 meter wavelength would be used solely for ships at sea. Now 600 meters is about 0.5 megahertz or 500 kilohertz. Now it is down in the MF band, medium frequency. That's not a derogatory term. That's not a, it's not a foul language abbreviation, okay? MF means medium fre frequency. HF is high frequency. LF is low frequency. VLF, low frequency, that kind of thing. There's, there's certain measurements of megahertz and kilohertz that follow those band, those segments of the band as we call it today. The HF band starts at three megahertz and goes to 30 megahertz, which most of amateur radio HF is in there. Technically the 160 meter band is between 1.6 and two megahertz. That is in the MF band. Technically it's not HF, it's MF, medium frequency. So there you go, that's a, that's a thing right there. But that's in the MF band down there at 0 0.500 megahertz or 500 kilohertz. As you can see right here, I just had, I just Googled it because I couldn't remember where the bottom of the MF band was, but medium frequency is the ITU designation for radio frequencies in the range of 300 kilohertz to three megahertz, which is 3000 kilohertz. So the 600 meter band would be 500 kilohertz, which would be in that range of frequencies. The next part of this article I found interesting was that Congress also passed the 1912 Radio Act, US Congress, which required licensing of commercial and amateur stations, amateur radio stations, minimizing interference communication between stations, addressing types of wavelengths used and prohibiting interference in radio communications to name a few. Congress delegated the task of investigating how to implement these measurements to the NIST, known at the time as the National Bureau of Standards. Pretty cool picture of a old piece of equipment right there. So great. So that's a, that's a really kind of a brief history on SOS, a brief history on C CQD, but I thought that the coolest part, okay, the really coolest part, okay, is this video I found that are literal transmissions from the, uh, somebody recorded it. Apparently it was recorded somewhere. And I don't know if they replayed the CW recording, if they found the, um, the written text that someone had copied down and someone put it to CW, or if there was an actual recording of the CW from back in the day. It was 110 years ago, so I'm not, I'm not sure what sort of recording equipment they had back then, but it's an interesting thing to look at regardless. So you guys check the link in the description below. I'm gonna play part of this video, but not the whole thing. Special thanks to this, uh, Canada Dan channel for posting this. This is really cool. So you're going to want to watch this. Learning Morse code is challenging, but can be very fun and rewarding. And if you're interested in doing it yourself, you can go check out chatradio.com, the sponsor of this video. Among other things, they sell a wide range of Vibraplex and Bencher keys 
at their store in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They've been a sponsor of the show for some time and I wanted to incorporate them and thank them for sponsoring this video. But check out the link in the description below. And if you go over there and check out the stuff that they have for sale on their website, be sure to tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. So this starts out where the Titan people are on the Titanic sending messages back to shore because why not? They're just communicating the same way you would send a text message today if you're at sea and you had a signal. Or you might call someone if you have a satellite phone or if you're a ham radio operator, you might actually get on the radio and say CQ, CQ, Maritime Mobile. Make sure you have the captain's permission before you do that. So Titanic to Cape Race. By the way, the designation for Titanic was MGY. M stand for Mar Marconi. And I'm not sure what GY was, but MGY is this. That's MGY. So you're gonna hear that now this guy sends a lot faster than I do, okay? But you're gonna hear that sequence of events and instead of spelling out Titanic, T-I-T-A-N-I-C, they just use MGY and that's the call sign for Titanic on this video here. So check this out, this is pretty cool. This guy's sending really fast. For me, that's fast. Titanic to Cape Race. I don't know what Cape Race is. George Sigmund, New York. Weather delightful, feeling fine. This is at 12.15 a.m. on April 15th. This is pretty cool. It's tragic, but it's, 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 it's fun to see how, how it was used back then, okay? So now, after that, you can see CQD. That's it. CQD. So I don't know, they're, they're using something there. They, I, I heard CQD, and then I heard a code, like a da da something. I, don't, I, I didn't understand that code, and then I heard MGY. So I don't know what they're using for this is. Is it TI? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know that. Um, somebody with better skills on CW could comment below. Given their position. Frankfurt's replying to the Titanic. What is the problem? What is the matter? <laughs> so it goes on to say, I mean, he just replies CQ, CQD again. Ti this is Titanic giving the position. Okay, stand by. Mount Temple to Titanic, what is the matter? Ah, so they couldn't read him. Titanic to Mount Temple cannot read you, old man. They were using OM back in the day. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> cannot read you, old man, but here are, here's my position. They're giving their position over and over again. Titanic sending CQD says requires assistance. Give position. Cannot hear me. Advise. That's what they're all saying. So they're saying CQD calling out distress signal, giving their position, but not telling people why quite yet. We have struck a bird, 12.25 a.m. Here it is. Titanic to Carpathia. Carpathia says to Titanic, do you know what the Cape Cod is sending a batch of messages for you, Titanic to Carpathia? Come at once, we have struck a berg. It's a CQD old man, position again. And then if you go on here, if you keep it, so they're sending CQD at this point in time. They haven't sent SOS yet, but they will here in a moment. Yeah, they couldn't read him. See, Carpathia to Titanic. Titanic to Carpathia. No old man. I can't read him for, for, for rush of air and noise of steam. So there was just like they didn't have headsets. Assume, uh, presumably they didn't have headsets. They were just sitting there calling uh, distress call CQD and SOS um, with a radio speaker on them or, so, or however they were listening to it right there. Okay, so Titanic to at 12.45 a.m. Titanic to Olympic SOS. CQD, SOS, this is Titanic. We have struck icebergs, sinking fast. Come to our assistance. 12.45 a.m.
Cape Race is doing a relay. Cape Race to California. SOS from Titanic. CQD in uh, position. This video here is 53 minutes long. I highly suggest you guys go watch this whole video. It's very interesting. Here we go. It's one, after 1 a.m. now. Lifeboat number 8 is launched from Titanic at 1 a.m. That's just what happened. That's not something they're sending. That's why it's in brackets like that. Okay, right here around 1.30 a.m. CQD SOS, CQD SOS. So they're sending both now. Engine room flooded right here. And this is the end of it. Collapsible boat C launch from CQ, C, CQD, CQD. This is Titanic at 2, 2, 2 a.m. And this is just kind of giving you a, a there's, there it is. A V was sent at 2.10 a.m. 2.10 a.m. CQD. And the, the audio on the video itself is lower than it was a minute ago. We are sinking fast. Passengers are being put into lifeboats. MGY, Titanic. Virginia Titanic cannot read you. They couldn't read them. The signal was so weak they couldn't read them. So presumably this was recorded. Someone, some expert in CW came along after the fact. In fact, this guy explains kind of more of this in a... Yeah, I've taken all Morse code communications I could find in the night of Titanic and turned it into a streaming text. Okay, so this guy created... Hats off to you, bud. This guy created... He, he went through and tapped out the Morse code himself from uh, written transcripts that were recorded during the event. Okay, good. It's easy to look at this after the fact because you hear... You, I mean, we all know what happened 110 years later. But SOS, SOS, CQD, CQD, Titanic. 2.17 a.m. I think this is the last one. CQD, this is Titanic. Oh, what they're sending for this is, is DE. DE means day, uh, it means from, D. Sometimes you'll see uh, guys uh, with on ham radio sign their email signatures, DE, their call sign. I sign that mine a lot of times, DE, KC5HWB. It means from. So this is Titanic, means from Titanic. Literally speaking, it's translated as from Titanic. I caught that DE just then. And that was it. That was it. That was the last recorded, documented transmission from the Titanic on the early mornings of April 15th, 1912. So again, I don't want to make light of the story. It's an interesting historical event that happened that we can learn a lot from, that we did learn a lot from. And now a lot of the telecommunications and maritime mobile rules and laws we have in place were a result of what happened to this ship and the tragic loss of life that happened on this ship in 1912. So a lot of the stuff we have today, we have better transmitters, we have better receivers, we have less RFI interfering stuff, we have headphones. Presuming that guy didn't have headphones because he was talking about how they could, he couldn't be heard because of wind noise and steam. You don't have your Heil Pro 7 on, presumably. Now we got experienced people, a lot more experience with it because it's not a new technology anymore. In fact, some people say it's not even used anymore and they just don't know. Interesting history behind the Titanic and the Morse code messages that were sent from them. Thank you to those of you who sent me the link in the last video. Put a comment in this video. Let me know what else you would like to see on this story.